So I think uh, everybody who's dealt with any type cabinet incubator, this is an absolute ancient incubator, but it's always worked really well and probably better than some of our newer incubators that we have. Um, and if you have smaller batches of eggs, you know, less than or 180 or so of like pheasant eggs or less than 600 quail eggs, this incubator's always been the one that we've gone to. Um, I think this was bought back in 1982. It's a Model 802 um, Sportsman Incubator from GQF. Um, now the one thing, obviously, a while back we just threw a plexiglass window on there on the inside and outside and just threw that on there just so we could see what's going on. Um, the kids like to see that too. Um, but the biggest problem we always run into is humidity. Um, if it's humid outside, if it's humid inside, all those things cause problems um, and end up um, throwing your hatches off. Um, humidity is probably the number one thing that I hear about people always having problems with. And aside from spending $3,000, $4,000, $5,000 on these very high-tech incubators, um, basically what I can do is show you how to take this incubator or any type of incubator, whether you have a little hova bader or something like that, and add automatic humidity control for about a hundred bucks. So hundred dollars and you don't have to constantly worry about um, getting the humidity pads that go along with this. And the big downfall when they designed these incubators I really think was this pan. If you look, it's a fairly decent sized pan. I mean, it's it's a few inches. Now it sits in place of right here where here's your airflow back there. Um, these, these were designed originally with just a pan. They weren't designed to have the pad, but people couldn't keep the humidity where they wanted it. So they put the pad, they got the humidity pads in there. Well, that's all fine and dandy. Big problem though, is you're not getting that good circulation anymore. Um, you're not getting that blowing from the back to the top as efficiently, so you're having hot and cold spots in your incubator, and it just makes things a big hassle. Um, not to mention the pads, if unless you're using like distilled water, crust up um, with this. This is an old, I haven't used this in years, so I haven't even cleaned it up because um, it's just been a big pain. Um, you know, and if anything happens with this float valve, well, next thing you know, your, your incubator swamps. So... Um, I can show you three things that you'll need. One, I bought five foot of washing, mach washing machine discharge hose. Um, it's like five bucks at uh, the local hardware store. And if you see, that's what's actually going into there, right there. And then I'll show you on my iPad here. Um, and I'm just going to pull up eBay because uh, all else fails, eBay. So. What I have here is what I'm going to recommend the two things that you get. You get the Zoomed Hydrotherm um, thermostat. Um, it's a thermostat and it's a hygrometer. Um, so here's the box for it. Um, you can go to a pet store, they'll have it. And basically what it allows you to do is there's a sensor right here that'll go inside of the incubator. Um, the rest of it stays outside. The controller stays outside so you can control everything from the outside and you can actually set your humidity to whatever percentage you want. You don't have to worry about wet bulb. You don't have to worry about anything else and it works great. Um, the other thing I'm going to recommend is you're going to need a, a humidifier. Do not get a warm mist humidifier. Uh, I would even recommend not getting a cool mist humidifier get an ultrasonic humidifier and the reason I say ultrasonic um, like this one is it doesn't heat the water up um, basically what it does is it vibrates at such a high rate there's a little uh, metal plate on there that will vibrate so fast that it will actually produce you see like fog um, and the nice thing about that and the nice thing about this one is I can actually here, right here, I can control the rate of the fog. So if I want to get a lot of fog, I can do that. If I don't want a lot of fog, which I keep it at about halfway here, um, you don't have to worry about it. Now, the reason I chose this Pure Guardian ultrasonic humidifier is number one, a lot of them you either have to get filters or you have to um, do stuff or you have to put distilled water in them to make sure that 
um, that little metal um, pad that vibrates at such a high speed doesn't get all calcified and crusted up. The nice thing about this Pure Guardian humidifier is if you'll see down there, there's the pad, there's the metal pad. All you need to do is every week or two weeks, um, you can use your regular tap water, whether it be hard water or soft water, um, is take a little bit of vinegar and they actually give you a brush and you just clean that calcified stuff off of there and it runs great, it's like brand new every single time. And this Pure Guardian humidifier, I think they go, it's an H1300, I think they go for about $70. I do know they're on eBay right now, um, it's um, March 29th. And they're, I believe it's the distributor, that the, person, people, the company that actually sells them, um, I think they're going for about $40 right now. So you can get that for $40, you can get this hydrotherm um, system right here for about $50 or $60, and then you can get that for about $10 or less. So we're looking at just a little over $100, and your life's going to be a lot easier now. Now... The only other thing is, obviously, you're going to want a little bit of uh, um, caulk or silicone to go around the hole. So what I did is I drilled a one and a quarter inch hose because this is a one and a quarter inch pipe. And the cool thing about this um, pipe right here is it's got this little rubber end right here, and it fits perfectly into this Pure Guardian humidifier. And voila, now your humidity is going all the way down into here. It's going into the um, incubator. Now, I do want to show you something after you get everything set up, and this is something you're going to want to pay attention to. Um, placement of the humidity is going to be a big part, and the sensor. So, here's the sensor from the, the hydrotherm um, humidifier controller. You want that to actually run on the other, on this side, because the airflow is coming from here, you want it to run on the back side of where the humidity is coming out. Now, I don't want the humidity blowing straight on the eggs because it is a little bit cooler and whatnot. So what I did is I basically just put a little screw right here um, to hold it in place. Now, and you don't want it blowing on if you have one of these, the wafer thermostats, because if it's blowing on the wafer thermostats, it's going to be a little bit cooler because the air outside and the water is cooler. Um, it's going to throw everything off there. So I like to place it right here, and I found that if I place that um, thermostat, if you can actually see, here's the thermostat, right about here, um, everything runs really well. So I'm just going to close this up. Like I said, this is an ancient incubator, but it always works. So um, Now, all you have to do is basically you take your hose, you put it in there, you get the placement that you want, you hook up your Pure Guardian humidifier and fill it up, fill this reservoir tank up. The one thing, another thing I like about this Pure Guardian humidifier, this ultrasonic humidifier, is you have to pay attention. Do not get an ultrasonic humidifier that's got its own humidity sensor, um, basically an automatic humidity sensor. This is just the amount of humidity that's coming out. It doesn't actually shut off once it reaches a certain humidity by itself. The reason you don't want that, obviously, if the humidity is higher outside of the incubator than inside of the incubator, um, you don't want it shutting off um, in the middle of your incubation because it's, it's reading a higher humidity out here. We want it to just basically turn on when the um, sensor tells it to turn on, which is why... Um, you use the, the Zoomed Hydrotherm. Um, there's a Zoomed Hydrotherm. Um, probably can't see it very well. Basically, all you do is you plug that in, and you plug your humidifier into the humidity section. You set your humidity to where you want it. You probably can't see it very well. It's about 49% right now. I have the door open, and I, I want it at 65%. So I set it. It's really easy to set the instructions. So I set it at 65%. If you see, it's going up to 51. And then I like to keep this dial here right about halfway. Um, it took a while for the humidity to get up there. Um, I think it actually saturates in the wood. Some of the new humidifiers actually aren't made out of wood, so you don't have to worry about it. Once the humidity gets up there, it stays there really well. Um, I don't like cranking it up to full. 
because that's blowing a lot of cooler air in there. Yeah, it'll get your humidity up to where you need it. It's really its preference. I like to keep it at about halfway um, and slowly get the humidity back up there. Um, you know, in the wild, birds get off of their nests anyway, so the humidity does drop. So um, it's really simple, though. Um, set the humidity where you want it. It does have on that hydrotherm where you can actually set it up to run some sort of heater. Now I'm going to recommend not. Um, for example, number one, the heater doesn't go in half increments. Um, so, you know, 99 and a half degrees is where you want to be uh, Fahrenheit or 37.5 Celsius. Um, it it just doesn't go in the half degrees, so you can't control the heat. Um, so basically, that's that's lost there, and the wafer thermostat or um, thermostats are what I really like to work with because they just seem to be that much more accurate. So once you've got your heat set and everything, and you're turning, this thing has an automatic turner, so it'll turn. There you go. You're you're set up for about a hundred bucks, and you don't have to worry about humidity anymore. Just make sure that the um, the humidity reservoir up here is full and. You don't have to monkey around with those, those ridiculous pads and blocking off all that nice uh, air. And it, I've been having hatch rates in the 95% um, doing this sort of stuff. So um, my in other incubator is fully automatic. Now this incubator is fully automatic and it costs me about $100, $110 and about 30 minutes to actually get everything all set up. Now it, it works really great. I think you can probably see the humidity um, actually coming out. And as soon as it hits 65%, it'll shut off, and then when it drops back down, it'll kick back in. So that's why you have that really nice uh, hydrotherm uh, from ZooMed. So there you have it. Very simple and effective.